Introduction to Criminal Law and Criminal Justice 1. Definition Substantive criminal law is the part of the law that deals with behavior which is defined as criminal, and results in punishment by the state when a person is found to be guilty of breaking the law. It is separate from procedural criminal law, which defines and regulates the powers of criminal justice agencies to investigate, prosecute and punish crime. Substantive criminal law is also separate from civil law, which deals with other forms of behavior that result in some form of compensation after a finding of guilt. A key difference between substantive criminal law and civil law lies in the standard of proof needed to find guilt in each case. For criminal law, guilt is proved by evidence of guilt beyond reasonable doubt. For civil law, guilt is proved by evidence of guilt on the balance of probabilities, which requires a lower standard of proof, and therefore less evidence, indicating guilt, than proof beyond reasonable doubt. The defendant in a criminal case is innocent until the police and prosecutors have enough evidence to prove beyond reasonable doubt in court that he is guilty of all the different elements of the criminal charges brought against him. This means that they will have to prove the guilty conduct specified by the definition of the offense, and also the guilty state of mind which is specified. Related to the rule regarding the burden of proof is the principle of the rule of law, which is equally fundamental to understanding criminal law and criminal justice. Under the rule of law, no one can be punished unless they have breached the law as it is clearly and currently defined, and they have been warned that the conduct they have been accused of is criminal the breach is proved in a court of law and everyone is subject to the rule of law, unless special status is given by the law itself. 2. Sources of criminal law Criminal law in some countries, under the rule of law, comes from three main sources. The first is known as common law. This is law which is made and developed by judges when they decide cases, in line with the rules on precedent. Precedent means that a particular court has to follow an earlier court's decision which is based on the same law and the same facts as the case it is currently deciding, and which was made at a higher court level or at the same level as itself but it does not have to follow decisions made at lower levels. The second source of criminal law is known as statute law. This is law which is created by parliament, and implemented in the form of acts of parliament, or statutes. Statute law is often used to decriminalize old offenses, create new offenses redefine or change criminal offenses which already exist, or bring together old pieces of legislation on the same topic. The third source of law is law which is developed from the obligation of substantive criminal law to comply with European human rights law as contained in the European Convention on Human Rights. 3. The Purpose of Criminal Law Clarkson summarizes the key theoretical approaches to the purposes of the criminal law, as follows. I diaris is the A law and economics approach, which states that the criminal law is that to deter A economically inefficient acts which do not help the economy, and regulate such behavior, given that individual offenders choose to commit crime of their own free will. I diaris is the A enforcement of morality approach which states that the criminal law is that to criminalize behavior which is against the common moral values of society. I diaris is the a paternalistic approach, which states that the criminal law is that to prevent behavior which causes harm either to offenders themselves, or to others. I diaris is the a liberal approach, which states that the criminal law is there only to prevent harm caused by offenders to others. I diaris is the a radical approach, which states that the criminal law is there to protect the interests of the powerful in society. And hide social conflict I diaris is the a risk management approach, 
which states that the criminal law is there to manage the risk to the public created by dangerous situations or behavior. 4. The Purpose of Criminal Justice. King, 1981, outlines the key theoretical approaches to the purpose of criminal justice, and the typical features which these theories would produce in practice if they were applied. The ADU process model, shown by equality between the defense and the prosecution in the process, rules protecting the defendant against error or abuse of power, and the presumption of defendant's innocence until they are proven guilty. The A crime control model, shown by disregard of legal controls, implicit presumption of guilt, support for the police, and a high conviction rate. The A medical model, shown by individualized responses to crime, treatment of the social causes behind offending rather than punishment of the offense, and discretion and expertise of decision makers. The A bureaucratic model, shown by the promotion of speed and efficiency, the minimization of conflict between people working in criminal justice and of money spent on the process, and the importance of an acceptance of records. The A status passage model, shown by the public shaming of the defendant, court values which reflect community values, and criminal justice agents control over the process. The A power model, shown by the reinforcement of class values through criminal justice, the deliberate alienation and suppression of the defendant, the presence of paradoxes and contradictions between the rhetoric and the performance of criminal justice, and the ignorance of social harm caused by inequality in society. Davis, 2005, 27, add a further two purposes of criminal justice as follow. The A just deserts model shown by offenders being punished according to the blameworthiness and harmfulness of their actions, the recognition of offenders' basic human rights, the need for establishment of the offender's blameworthiness before punishment, and the recognition of the right of society to punish those who have offended. The A risk management model shown by the monitoring and control of offenders based on the risk they pose to society and their previous offending history the use of surveillance and supervision to reduce crime and change offending behavior, and the use of longer sentences for offenders who are seen as being particularly dangerous, 